to the missional message evening. Missional message 참석하신 여러분 환영합니다. Before we begin, let's pray together this time. 시작하기 전에 기도하겠습니다. Father God, um, we thank you. 하나님 감사합니다. Uh, thank you that uh, we were able to kneel down before you. 우리가 하나님 앞에 무릎 꿇게 하신 거 감사합니다. God, we pray this time that at this moment, may each and every one of our uh, mem- uh, church members, church officers, uh, and as well as our uh, ministers, may they strengthen their inner being. 이 시간 한명한 한 명의 성도들과 중지자들과 사역자들이 내적인 힘을 얻게 하여 주옵소서. May the time that they may be filled by your spirit. 하나님의 성령 충만을 받게 하여 주옵소서. God, so that wherever they go into their fields, uh, they may be able to kneel down before you. 어디를 가든 현장에서 하나님 앞에 무릎 꿇게 하옵소서. God, we come before you now so that um, as we kneel down, that our remnants, our disciples. And the people around us, that they too can come before you. 우리가 하나님 앞에 나와서 무릎 꿇는 이 시간에 렘넌트와 제자들이 함께 나와 이 응답을 드릴 줄 믿습니다. God, we pray at this time that just as Paul enjoyed the answer of Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 2 to 3 in their field, um, in his field. 바울이 예레미야 33장 2절 3절의 응답을 본인의 현장에서 들었던 것처럼. God, may we too also make that confession upon our field. 우리 현장에서 그 신앙 고백이 이루어지게 하옵소서. God, may you alone be glorified at this time. 하나님이 하나님만이 이 시간 홀로 영광 받아 주옵소서. God, at this time, as the minister, as the committed workers and the messengers, God, may you grab a hold of us. 우리 사명자들과 메신저를 하나님께서 붙들어 주옵소서. God, upon their fields, may you open the doors of 다락방. 이들의 현장에 하나님이 다락방의 문을 열어 주옵소서. Upon their fields, may you grant them life. 이들의 현장에 하나님이 생명 운동을 일으키시옵소서. Maybe a time in 2021 where people can return back to you. 2021년은 많은 사람이 하나님께 돌아오는 한 해가 되게 하옵소서. We thank you. 감사하며. Jesus Christ, we pray. 예수 그리스도를 기도합니다. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let's sing, fill me with the Holy Spirit. 성령으로 충만하게 하옵소서. 전하겠습니다. Uh, at this time, as we've given uh, receiving the word to strengthen our inner being. 우리가 말씀을 받는데 우리 내적인 힘을 얻어야겠습니다. That God who is our creator. 우리의 창조주이신 하나님. God who formed me. 우리를 만드신 하나님. God who and I am God's handiwork. 하나님이 바로 나를 만드셨습니다. Make that confession of faith. 이 찬양을 같이 하겠습니다.
is the time that the committed workers to receive the word of God. Uh, absolutely, this is a word that not only for us to receive, but absolutely, it's the word that God desires to give to His people. 하나님이 하나님의 백성에게 선포하기를 원하시는 말씀입니다. This time, God, give me your word. 하나님 말씀을 받게 주옵소서. At this time, may I receive your grace. 이 시간 내가 은혜 받게 하여 주옵소서. At this time, may I confirm that right now my inner being is being filled, uh, is being powered by your spirit. 지금 이 시간 내 내적인 것들이 하나님이 주신 힘을 얻게 하여 주옵소서. Let's pray at this time. 같이 기도하겠습니다. Lord, we just thank you at this time for granting us your word. God, upon the committed workers, may you grant your word. God, we pray at this time that may you give them, give them the accurate direction. And throughout this week, as they lead their Tarapang ministry, we pray at this time that may you guide them. God, may you open the doors of evangelism. May the accurate gospel be relayed in that field. We thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before evangelism, there's three things that need to take place. Because we have to live inside of the evangelism. Then there's three things that need to always take place. And you have to see this always. You need a tarapang where you can continue to proclaim the gospel in the field. This is biblical evangelism. So this is the unique method that God has given to us. And this is the purpose is to save the field. So the important thing is set the time as well as the place. And you have to really prepare this in prayer. God, I pray at this time that may you allow that sort of evangelism movement to take place. So honestly, it could be just with one other person. It could be for two other people. But absolutely, you need this. Because the grace that I have received needs to be flown out. So throughout the week, the message and the grace that I received needs to come out of me. So that's why Tarapang is a place of evangelism, the purpose. God, through what I do, I pray at this time that may the evangelism take place. And number two, and once you set the Tarapang, you need to begin the prayer. This is the key. And God, I pray at this time that I may be able to take hold of the of the the mission that you have set before me. And in, in the midst of that, we need meditation. The accurate prayer is needed. And this is what number two needs to take place. And thirdly, you need the living gospel, not just the gospel. But there needs to be an actively moving gospel. That it's the gospel that continues to live and flow. So today I'm going to give you five messages. So look at the stream and try to apply that within your life. So let's say you open the tarapang and you've gathered with people who know nothing. So 
So while holding on to that stream, I want you to. I'm, I'm going to talk about five things. So the first meeting. So with the first meeting. That it's the basics. So when we talk about the basic gospel message, we talk about the basic scriptures from the basic gospel message. So this is what you do in Tarakbang. So especially when you go out to the field, it's not easy to, to bring a Bible and just open the Bible. It, and that's why, because when you're evangelizing to people, it's hard to carry a Bible and read through the Bible. That's why you carry evangelism materials. But uh, we're talking about after that's taken place, they have gathered at the Tarapan meeting. And during the Tarapan meeting, a non-believer has come to you. Do you understand? I'm talking about that text. That right now, in your Tarapan, a non-believer has entered the Tarapan. So if the non-believer has come to you in your tarapang, it means that God has prepared that person to come to you. Then it's during this time, it's important that you show the scriptures because they are giving up their time and they've come to see you. And, and so as you are sharing the, the gospel, you are reading these Bible scriptures to them. So starting from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, they talk about Genesis chapter 3, we talk about the spiritual problem. And then afterwards, you'll talk about John chapter 1, verse 12, and the 13, and then from there you accept. So what you do is that you make them accept Jesus Christ. And then the second meeting. The, what is the second meeting? It's John chapter 2. And it's verse 1 through 11. So you have accepted Jesus Christ. So we shouldn't just end with just acceptance. That what you need to do is you need to have uh, Him as your master. So this is the order. I'm explaining the, the five spiritual stream that Pastor Yu shared, and I'm explaining it to you right now. So this is 1992. This is um, when Pastor Ryu was in the Dongsamir Church in, um, in Busan. That's when he shared this message. And so that's why I'm, as I listen to the message, I'm organizing, and the um, and my hope is that I can share this message with you. So you need to really think about this and participate in this. So right now we're doing the third thing. Set the time, tarapang. As you're praying, you would do that. And a non-believer has joined you. And then from there, the person accepts Jesus Christ. And then from there, John chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, we explain. This is the first miracle. It's never before it's happened. But through Mary, a miracle took place. But through this, that um, uh, Mary uh, uh, raised Jesus as her master. And the moment that she, he became Lord, a miracle took place. In our Christian walk of faith, we need to have Christ as our Lord. And you have to continue to relay that message. And as you share this message, what do you do? Always the living gospel needs to be proclaimed. It's a living gospel. It must never be legalism. So it's important to, to fit the first correct button that always the gospel needs to be relayed. Always it is Christ-centered. 
I need to proclaim Christ so that Christ can actively work upon their life. And then the third thing, it's the way of salvation. You go back to that. And from here, you draw out the way of salvation. Do you remember? You remember the cross, right? The way of salvation is this is when we share. The third thing. Do you understand? Not from the beginning. On the third time, you then share the way of salvation. And then the fourth thing. What's the fourth thing? You tell them the difference between what is the law and what is the gospel. What is the difference between legalism and the gospel? This is the key. You need to make a clear distinction between legalism and the gospel. Because not through religion can save one's soul. And it cannot be done by good works. And absolutely, philosophy is not the way to attain salvation. You need to explain this clearly. And that's why you know the story about, we talk about quite often about the pirate ship and the, and the person who is uh, the princess in the pirate ship. So let's say that there is a very kind person on this pirate ship and he's working diligently. That is a sin. So even though he's working hard, even though he's living a kind and he is obeying and submitting, but unfortunately, he serves the pirate ship. That even him, him eating dinner, that is a sin. Why? Because by doing that, he is supporting an, uh, uh, the pirates who will con continue to destroy lives. And that's why it's important that once again in our life, who is the Lord and Master? That He has to be my source of life. And that is the fourth thing. Do you understand? So the important thing is you have to continue to open the eyes of the person. How do you check? What you need to confirm as you lead the ministry is that more and more they disappear and more and more Christ is being revealed through their life. Because quite often what happens is that the, gospel, the um, people try to believe in a most legalistic way of the gospel. They try to use Jesus. You need to do the ministry to take out that legalism. That Jesus loves you. He has a great plan for you. He is with you. He's going to guide you. He's going to continue to guide you toward this direction. And then the fifth thing. He talks about the five assurances. You remember this, right? The um, assurance of salvation. Assurance of answers to prayer. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. Assurance of forgiveness of sins. Assurance of victory. This is the time we then explain the five assurances. That you are inside of that. So what is this inside? So this is the five messages. Then from here, it's at the time that you give them assurance. Why do I share this? Because today we are inside that stream. Do you understand? So always these three things need to be inside your heart. The inside of this I will do world evangelization. So this is what we need in Tarapang. Do you understand? So you need to place this within your heart and live every day. And so that's why we need the five messages in our heart. Do you understand? And so that's why we need to follow that flow within the gospel. So we can just prepare in that way. And today's message, what do we need? This is what we need. 
What do these people do? So inside of the Holy Spirit, they gain power. Oh, so be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. So we talked about that inner being being strengthened. There's something that you need to do before that. You need to understand that value of why you need to strengthen your inner being. So there is value in this. So it's interesting because if you look at the book of Ephesians, it always emphasizes in Christ. It talks about in Christ, inside of Christ. It's continuing to be repeated. So if you look at the book of Ephesians, he emphasizes the phrase in Christ a lot. What does that mean? It means that inside of Christ, there is value. So if you understand that value, you can pray for strengthening your, whole, your inner being. Do you understand? So right now we are going to do ministry. What is the most important thing? We are inside of Christ. And because Christ is with me, I am with Christ. And I understand that and I possess that mystery. And if that takes place, then everything else just follows. Do you understand? So the most important thing is that as we are being um, strengthening our, with the Holy Spirit, we, we are strengthened inside. So if you are inside of this, there is an answer that will be given to you. So, so I'm going to uh, share three things to you about this. So I share this briefly during the Sunday message. So the important thing is that you have to be absolutely rooted in this. So we need to do this. Our inner being needs to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. That what really is that sort of picture and image of, a, of, of someone who is um, strengthened by their inner image? How do they become strengthened? But I get it when, you know, when we talk about you know, your body gets strengthened. So if you look at Elder Kwok and Elder Harding, they're you know, tall. They're really tall people. They have some strength and power. So if they go like this, then they'll probably scare people. Because you can see that. But Lewis doesn't have that. Assistant Pastor Lewis doesn't have that. So Elder Harding and Elder Kwok, they have this. So I understand physically what that means. But look carefully. So what does it mean that our inner being is like that? It says in the Bible. What does it say? Look at verse 3. Uh, chapter 3. It says in chapter 3. Chapter 3? Let's look at verse 11 and then verse 12. Let's read it together. According to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him and through faith in him we may approach God within freedom and confidence. That there is freedom and then there is confidence. This is the key. Do you understand? That there is freedom and then there is confidence. So it's not something that I can do. Do you understand? That I just become bold. And I have this assurance. And that's why we understand that and because of that, with that we pray. So Paul said it ahead of time and then said, with this, let's enter into prayer. Do you understand? So don't lose hold of verse 12. So the key is Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12. So God. So when we say that our inner being is strengthened, it means that God, I understand my inner being needs to be strengthened. There, I understand the freedom and the confidence. So give me that. So already he has given these three things. It's three things. The first thing, 
It's Ephesians chapter 1. So we need to meditate upon Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. And this is what Paul shared. That God has already given you everything. What did he do? That even before creation, he has already predestined you. This is the key. So before anything, he has chosen you already. This is you. You are inside of this. We call this grace. Do you understand? You need to have this really boldly. So you have to help others to understand this. That this is God's word. That before creation, He has already chosen you. And even now, what is He doing? He is fulfilling that. He has predestined it. And this is the same thing. This is the key. So He has chosen me, but He's also predestined me. For what? And for what is the purpose? It's for His children. And because of that, what is the purpose for us to give praise to His glory? It's to give praise. So look at this carefully. So already God has given us this and this is God's plan. This is our Christian walk of faith. God calls this grace. Before even you were even created, God, God chose you and He also predestined you. And you are now inside of Christ. Right? So look at the, careful, the Bible carefully. So God may I hold on to this. This is who you are. This is your value. This is your way of life. So don't be like the people of this world. God knows all of the problems and your crises. God knows your environment. So open your eyes to see this. Do you understand? So you have to really deeply enter inside of this. This is life. Do you know what life is? That God is with me and He planned and He's working in this way. Do you understand? And then two. So He has given us salvation and He has given us this for the purpose of salvation. What is salvation? It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. This is what salvation is. So quite often if we talk about um, uh, salvation, these Bible verses come out. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. What's verse 1? That you are saved from your past. Your past is finished. You were dead, but then you were resurrected. So verse 1 is talking about your past. That you were dead in your sins and transgressions. You were already dead before. But now you are restored. Because you are inside of Christ that all of your past problems are solved. And even in verse 2, you have God has saved you. What's verse 2? The force of darkness are working even now. He has saved you from that. For chapter 2, verse 2. Let's read it. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. You have been saved from that. Even now he's working. So even now he is, um, the, all the things are working right now. That despite the kingdom of the air, you are set free from that. So we're talking about verse 2 and verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 1, verse 2. 
And then after it's chapter 2, verse 6. That it says that you're already, God has raised you to seat next to Jesus. Let's read together. And God raised us with Christ. And seated with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Already you are seated. The already God had prepared the, the future. That God already knows that you are seated at the seat next to Jesus. That your future is finished. Your past. Your past, your present, and your future has been resolved. And then from there, the answers will continue to come. That's chapter 2, verse 7. And he's going to continue to give those evidences to you. We call that salvation. So already he has a plan for you. And to those who are saved, they will, be, they will enter into the strengthening of their inner being. They have, they have to be bold. They are just assured. That's why they pray earnestly like, God, may you strengthen my inner being with your spirit. Because Satan keeps tricking you to not believe this. We call that spiritual battle. Even today he tries to deceive you. He tries to give you fear. He makes you th see the things that are your, in your reality. That we don't have the power to overcome that. That's why we pray. That with the power of the Holy Spirit, I strengthen my inner being. And with that, I pray for that confidence and I pray for that assurance. Because God has already prepared and He has already given it to you. So this is already God given. It's to you. God has given it to you, and that's why we enter into verse eight. Chapter two, verse eight is so important. So in some ways, this is the conclusion for today. It's not a difficult message. It's easy. I'm just give just give them a couple of these key words, just a couple key words. So God is saying that using these key words, you know, God says He has chosen you, He has predestined you, so that He can be glorified through you. Who is giving salvation? Is it you? No, it's not. It is given by God. Let's look at verse 8. It's so important. So perhaps you should memorize this too. Let's read it. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. There are four things that come out. The first, it's grace. Salvation is grace. You receive it through grace, not by faith. This is the key. Salvation, it begins with the grace of God. But, but the method is faith. Do you understand? But without the grace, you cannot have faith. The fact that you are able to believe and have faith is God's grace. So when you receive salvation, so you say that you believe, although that's the method, but it's because of God's grace. And what's the third term? This is the third, I mean, this is important. Said so you have been saved. That you have received, you have received that salvation. It's finished. So what is it? It's not by from yourselves. But it is what? The gift of God. So for example, so you can say this. So if we take a look at this um, sort of like a uh, well, so it's like a circular well. 
And let's say that there's water present. There's a, there's a moon. Oh, there's a moon that's reflecting off of that well. So you throw the, you throw the rock into the well. And you, you kind of shake the water. So the moon will all of a sudden, that image will disappear. It'll kind of break. But it doesn't mean that the moon doesn't exist. Does that make sense? So in that same way, we use this example to say that this is one... Even just like a reflection of the moon that's being shown through the well, perhaps even your Christian walk of faith can shake as well. It can be difficult. But just like that well, that moon never, that salvation never changes. We call that life. That God has given you this life and He's saying that I'm going to walk with you. And we have to gain that inside of this answer. That through your life, God says that He wants to be glorified through your life. And that's why when you share these Bible scriptures, that's why you tell them, this is why we have to enter into strengthening the inner being. So you need to have this assurance to enter. You have to have this sort of assurance, that boldness. And with that, you gain the strength that comes from God. And with that, you enter into 2021. Do you understand? So when you go to Tarapang this week, you have to explain them. And you have to give them that sort of assurance and share it with assurance as well. That the most important thing is that you have to give them, it has to be strengthening for them. Whatever problems come your way doesn't matter. Because God is going to work through your life. Do you understand? I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ that you may be strengthened by this at this time. Let's pray to you at this time. God, I pray that this word will be fulfilled. You have given this word to me. You've called me in this way. God, when you, uh, you made me, you called me by your name be because you own my life. God, may this... May this message be strengthened and may I have the assurance and boldness. And with the confidence, allow me to enjoy this daily. Let's pray to you at this time. Father God, we sincerely thank you. God, we pray at this time that may you allow the blessed meeting. Pray at this time upon all of our ministers, may you give them the authority. Pray that all the force of darkness will be broken down. God, we pray at this time that when all the works, we pray that your glory will be revealed. God, may each and every one of our committed workers, may they be able to experience the indwelling guidance of the working of the Holy Spirit. And that assurance, the confidence that you give to them may be shared to others. So that life itself can be relayed to others. God, we pray at this time that may your word be living and active upon those who listen to your word.
word, may they gain new life. So they may be strengthened. They may have new hope. They could be an accurate answer for their lives. And that we pray that their inner being may be strengthened. That in every meetings that they attend, we pray at this time, may Christ be the answer and may they live in Christ. Now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great unending love of God the Father, then dwelling in the working of the Holy Spirit, upon the heads of all of our committed workers, upon their meetings, upon their fields, will be upon them now and forevermore. Amen.